This was um, <clears throat> this was um, um, the first workshop that we had in our uh, postgraduate course, and it uh, addressed um, the effects of the capital uh, which is um, which uh, which is which comes after the Anthropocene, and uh, we kind of explored how we could um, deal with policies that uh, could kind of change that. And uh, our site was to do with, sorry, our site was to do with uh, um, social housing, um, uh, social housing blocks in in Hackney, and most of the, most of the stuff is there in the video, so I'll just play the video. The managed decline of a housing estate reveals a system where profit takes precedence over people and their environments. In the process of devaluing the area before transforming it for higher financial gains, communities are displaced and the physical and social fabric of the space is eroded. The Queensbridge Court housing estate is a shadow of its potential. Open areas once intended for community spaces are now fenced off, inaccessible and neglected. The green spaces that should provide life and interaction sit idle reflecting an urban landscape left to decline. These fences symbolize a larger issue, a disconnection between land, community, and care. Under the weight of the policies that view land as a commodity, the estates become a place where land's value is frozen, controlled, and contained, rather than thriving for the people who live here. Change begins quietly. A small group of well-intentioned residents come together to establish a community benefit society. To establish a connection between growing and living, they join hands with organizations such as the London Freedom Seed Bank and St. Mary's Secret Garden. Gradually, a few gardeners and cultivators gain access to underutilized spaces within the estate. The first signs of life emerge. The residents reclaim the right to use the land for their own needs. As the soil is carefully tilled and the food is planted, the estate begins to awaken. The efforts of the first planters don't go unnoticed. As the gardens flourish, more residents are drawn into the growing movement. What starts with a few planters soon expands into a collective effort that challenges the boundaries between the rural and the urban divide. This transformation signifies the spread of food sovereignty within the estate. As people come together, they reclaim control over what is grown and how it is shared. As the community gains momentum through its collective growing efforts, a deeper change takes hold. A public common partnership is adopted to make decisions collectively and democratically. The growing of food serves as a catalyst for broader revitalization that transcends physical spaces. Recognizing the importance of sustaining these efforts for future generations, a food shelter connected with the Haggerston School is established. Here, the community invests in the future, ensuring that the younger generations will understand the value of food and the land in which it grows. 20 years pass. The growing activities have created not only food, but also resources that are reinvested into the estate's infrastructure. These resources have been used to improve playgrounds and common areas. Composting and water management, along with food growing activities, have fostered supply solidarity within the estate. Through their collective efforts, the residents have created a self-sustaining system, relying little on external forces. The estate now thrives, with food production becoming a central aspect of life here. With the ground fully utilized, the residents look for newer spaces to grow. They turn their eyes to the terraces, transforming them into productive growing areas. Vertical gardening becomes the next frontier, showing the community's adaptability. Even in this constrained urban setting, life finds a way to flourish. By expanding vertically as well as horizontally, the residents not only maximize their space, but also reinforce the idea that every corner of the environment is an opportunity for reconnecting living and growing spaces. The estate continues to evolve, not just as a housing complex, but as an agroecological system. The estate has not just been restored, it has been reimagined. It embodies a vision of urban life where land is not commodified but cultivated, where communities take control of their resources, where future generations grow up knowing the value of food, community and shared space. I think it's a social manifesto, it's really interesting and, and uh, I don't know how you're going to go on to, to develop this, but the idea that you can regenerate a community through gardening and, and then food production seems, seems to me uh, 
both a radical and a very achievable uh, way of working. I think as you go on to develop the idea, specificity of, of climate and, and plants would be an interesting thing to, to for you to explore. But yeah. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. I think the agroeconomical uh, dimension is really essential. It is something that I think we've uh, really forgotten, um, particularly in uh, urban uh, environments where all our food is imported from outside. And so I think it's a very radical move to use space for the production of food when uh, you know we have the pressure as, as, that uh, Carolyn Still would talk about of uh, this idea of cheap food that um, you know, supermarkets now have a hold on the food economy yeah. um, that we have very little uh, say in. Um, and so because of the cheapness of food, it you know, becomes extractive elsewhere. Um, and I think that this is a, 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 a very uh, fundamental way to rechange balance of power, decision-making, resilience, all these kinds of things. And I think um, I would also love to see how um, space is reclaimed through that and the material cycles as well within. So you've got the kind of, I'm, I'm imagining that the tower block then is the site for retrofit, mm -hmm. for reassimilation and re kind of distribution of, of, of space and matter. So, uh, you know, and blurring the boundaries of what we saw in the last presentation between structure and garden you know, so that in the last presentation we had, you know, the previous presentation, uh, was a wall. And that then that wall became transformed by the interventions, the histories, the futures. I, I think this is a very ripe. I think your uh, um, animation was fantastic. Thank you. Um, and I guess I would like to uh, encourage you to be even more bold. Uh, because I think that, you know, like, what is the future? You know, what, are we, what are we eating? Uh, we did a, a food, you know, there was a, there's a wonderful food artist called Carolyn Hobkinson. And we imagine the future for um, food in the estuary area in London. And so it was like alligator and um, pigeon. So pigeon fed, pigeon fed alligator, you know, so... Um, when we think about food production, do we always reference a kind of crop-based you know, practice that was in the past? Or are we looking at food crops and food production and the kinds of menus that we... I always find that menus are really indicative of how we eat and what we're eating and the value of it. Um, so if we can kind of really build up that, that picture, the complexity of, of how we go forward and how things change, it's a fantastic project you've got there. Thank you. I think it's also uh, a little bit about how we can reduce the stress that's there in the, the rural areas where mm -hmm. most of the farming is happening mm -hmm. and kind of bring in uh, growing food into uh, living spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice.